Hey everyone, this is Brent Endy's The Dog Savant, dogtrainingla.com. So today I want to talk about something that is really, um, it's a big deal. Um, this is something that I find a lot of trainers uh, don't talk about and a lot of dog owners aren't aware of in terms of this being the primary contributor to why dogs have behavior problems or act out um, in other environments or at other times. Uh, and what is that? Dogs that are tracking, anticipating, and reacting to life too strongly in an everyday setting, meaning the come and goings and the interactions they have with their owners and the shared surroundings, directly relates to a dog having the impression that they have to keep track of bigger parts or elements of their shared life with their human owners and families that puts them in a place of great responsibility aka insecurity because deep down they know that they are not supposed to assess or feel responsible for that particular undertaking what does that mean okay i'll give you a good example so you get and, and the only reason why i'm talking about this very matter of factly is because i've seen it enough i've seen the direct relation you have around thousands and thousands of dogs and their owners in a home and you see how a pattern directly contributes to another issue and if you address that base pattern which again is dogs tracking and reacting and anticipating to everyday life around them too strongly it contributes to at sometimes you know the problems that we're really addressing non-existent in the first place or at the very least the dog is much more willing to engage the training and learn from the spot on you know type of training we're doing if let's say your dog is leash reactive or you know doesn't listen when you need them to um, it just makes a lot more sense for that to happen in a positive way if your dog feels that you are keeping more track of them and monitoring them and giving them a calm structured lifestyle versus an overstimulating over anticipated uh, anticipating an impulsive kind of lifestyle that tends to get rewarded or again fly under our radars because we're living in a different plane of existence even though we're in the same shared uh, natural habitat and living environments um, so again w w what is an example of this uh, you get a dog okay and you know a lot of times we enjoy when our dog follows us or gets overly exuberant when they greet us or you know is all excited to get their food and we just think boy this dog is just so enthusiastic and we don't see what's really happening is the dog is making an overstimulated impulsive association and then getting rewarded for it as a way to navigate their life and the critical transition periods that they interact with with humans and that's why most dogs have their issues when new things occur when they first see something because they've been taught that this is what to do and then when they get older it's developed into such an intense way of life or it's the right combination of events then you wonder why a dog that was just jumping or exciting and mouthing and doing all that is now reacting on a leash when they see a dog or a person it's all part of the same equation um, you know and again why is the mouthing a, a lot of what these dogs do at these times they're feeling sensory overload and they're trying their best to decompress the situation by creating this sensory organization on people because that's what works when they're mouthing on each other to calm and balance each other and create this integral unit with their energy versus when they're doing it to us it's like now I'm even in more responsibility or we pet them or we say oh it's just gently there's such deep meaning to that mouthing and I've done full videos on it and I'll continue to do more but that's the litmus test if your dog is mouthing or looking like they don't know what to do they're getting too caught up and feeling too responsible in a way that we sometimes think is just exciting exuberant behavior okay so you have a dog that is just waiting for the next shoe of life to fall it's like every time you get up you do something new I've had cases where you're talking back and forth and as soon as the next person talks dog starts whining anticipating and freaking out that has to be buffered by calm single-pointed focus getting a dog into a balanced state where their mind and body are connected they're thinking about one thing instead of 20 things and they're feeling a sensory organization more like how when a human meditates it gets everything in sync and you can be more observant and filtered versus reactive and stimulated okay so again if that's accomplishing itself where it's like even to the point where I know a human is gonna go to the kitchen and get this and come back and do that and then I get attention or what I want it's like my thoughts are moving life ahead without these humans even having a clue that it's going on. Oh my God, I gotta take on the world. That's how a dog can feel. And then when you're on a leash and they feel tethered and you're restricting their space, 
that fight or flight instinct is gonna kick in strong because they have to protect you. You don't know what you're doing in terms of getting in the way of dog business and now they're overcompensating for the situation because they feel so insecure. Everyone's gonna die if they don't overreact to have the space creating behavior. I mean, that in a nutshell is what's going on with most issues of dogs. Um, let's go to something like separation anxiety. Same issue. You have this dog that's just feeling that if I just hang on to every move and react to things and jump on it and nobody's buffering it or giving me a job or direct instruction, well now that you're gone at work, I can't keep track of you. My ducks aren't in a row. I'm freaking out. It's not that the dog misses you. It's bottom line is what's been working when you're there in real time cannot be accomplished when you're not there. So the dogs are trying to get their head around it and they're scrambling for control and that's why they freak out and they act so dramatic because it really does work in their mind that following your patterns, anticipating what you do, getting rewarded for it is how life goes on and they stay alive. And a lot of these dogs learn this as a puppy and that's where they're most formidable and that's what they develop as their schema for the rest of their life. And we have to change that and create a new foundation or if you have a puppy that is very sensitive, driven, very reactive to the environment, you want to buffer this as soon as possible and teach them to get from A to B in a calmer, more guided way, a less uh, stimulating way in a more calm, filtered way. Um, I think I explained this pretty well because this is something that I at times can struggle with painting a picture for people because they seem to think that the training has to be only where the problems that they see as a problem occur versus this whole lifestyle relationship type of change or structure or setting up a foundation to contribute to the actual issues at hand and again in many cases they're not there in the first place or you can work with them and your dog will have a much more open mind for the engagement training process. Um, okay, well please uh, let me know if you have any questions. I love Q&A, so send those in. Uh, visit my website, dogtrainingla.com. And thanks for watching. Love your dog, guys. Have a good day.